Now that you're getting music out of your head and into the real world, there are some important things you need to know. We've got the basics and the not so basics, starting with copyright. Yo, you're about to get a lesson whether you like it or not. You're gonna sit here and listen to this. Artists don't talk about copyrights because it's boring. Producer, musician, composer, engineer, songwriter Omas Keith tells it like it is. The reason why you need to know what a copyright is is because it's your property. It's your right. Having a copyright means you own your own work. User researcher <laughs> Kamea knows what's up. So, you might have a great idea, but if it's just in your head, we can't copyright that. You either have to write it down or record it. The copyright actually begins as soon as you do that. And another thing you need to know, every track has two copyrights. That's right, so there's one for the underlying song, and there's a separate copyright for the sound recording. Oh, hey, that's Darren from our legal department. I am Darren. And uh, this is Darren. And Alan from our licensing <laughs> team here at Spotify. So right off the bat, I think it's important to know that we're talking generally about the way things work in the industry and for copyright. You know, you need your own legal advice to understand these things fully. Got it. So out of the gate, the recording's owned by you or you and your collaborators. Same thing goes for the composition. The owner is you or whoever wrote the song, generally speaking. One note's not a composition. That is an element of what will become a composition. So as soon as you arrange two things in a series, that, that's something. Indie musicians Matt and Kim share rights with each other. What up? And sometimes with collaborators. Before you go into a collaboration, I know it's gonna sound like a dick move, but get everything in writing. And then in writing say, if any of these things change, it needs to be brought up and discussed immediately. Cheryl Crow. Hey everybody. Likes to keep her split simple. I would tell anybody that's collaborating, just split it down the middle. Whoever's in the room, split it percentage wise according to how many people are there. It's just easier. And why does it matter who owns what? Because that determines who's in charge of how a recording or song gets used. It can also determine who gets paid when that song gets played. Getting your money's always good. You must get your money because it's your money. That's my bag. Give me my bag. That's my car. You own it, if you, if you own it. Keep in mind too that rights ownership may vary depending on whether you're with the label or independent. Most artists under label contract exchange rights to their work or even ownership to their work for an advance marketing promotional support and for a split of future royalties. And if you collaborate with major label artists, it's pretty much a given that you're going to be transferring, reassigning, selling, or granting people a stake in your copyright. I've done it. People are doing it every day. On the other hand, if you're uploading through a content aggregator or through Spotify for Artists, the exclusive rights and the ownership stays with you. The point is that you've got options. Okay, so you've recorded your track. What happens next? So in the US, you may want to register your work with the copyright office. No matter where you are, if you wrote that song or composition, you might want to consider registering it with a performing rights organization, such as BMI or ASCAP, because they're the ones that are going to make sure you get paid. Paid for that song. Paid for that song. Lawyer. Yeah. Or if you're signed to a music publisher, they'll handle all that for you. It's basically about understanding how to send your ideas forth into the world and still protect what's yours. Like Wu-Tang Clan, protect your neck. They told you from a long time ago what you needed to do. Facts, copyright coming at you. That's it, y'all. 